Hey, that's pretty good. What'd you wish, Mary? Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? tonight can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? Dance by the light of the moon. What'd you wish when you threw that rock? Oh, no. Come on, no. tell me. Hello, and welcome to a very special preempt of Book Versus Movie. We're doing a holiday preempt. We've never done this before. <laughs> I am Margot P. of the Chingona Homesteader, and this is my good friend and co-host, Margot D. of Brooklyn Fitchick. Hi, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's this week. Yes, it is. And I have hardly done any shopping. <laughs> We're super behind. <laughs> I barely said, I have a card here for you. I haven't sent it yet. <laughs> Yours went in the mail got, the other day. <laughs> oh, really? I just, I actually got around to making them, so that's cool, but I haven't actually, I have a, I'm staring at them, and there's a huge stack on my desk right now. But we were, we were going to be doing The Wizard of Oz today, but we decided to change our minds. <laughs> just like that, Margo, you sent me a, a, a note and said, did you know that It's a Wonderful Life is based on a short story? And I was like, no. And then we looked it up and it's on Kindle. It's easy to get. And so we were like, I've seen It's a Wonderful Life like a couple of hundred times. So I thought, yeah, we could talk about that. So that's what we're doing today. It's a Wonderful Life. And it's based on a book called The Greatest Gift. That's right. I did not know either that it's based on a short story. I found out at work, I I work with a lot of I work with a lot of libraries as part of my job, and so my Twitter my Twitter stream is filled with library stuff. And one of the librarians that I follow on Twitter was tweeting about the scene in "It's a Wonderful Life" where where Clarence says, "She where she's about to close up the library," <laughs> and it was this long, long. It was hilarious. It's a very long. You know when you have those Twitter conversations that are just so funny and like they go on and on and on. And so it was this long, long feed of, of convo and I'm, you know, laughing and reading it. And, and somebody says in in the middle of this conversation somewhere, somebody says that, Oh, in the book, Mary is married and has kids with some other guy. And I was like, (laughs) did, and how did we not know this? I, I guess the story is more about the movie than the source material it's more about frank capra and it's usually more about uh, jimmy stewart yeah. i think that's just become the narrative over the years so we didn't even consider the fact that this came from uh, this kind of a source a short story but it did so before we get to that though mm-hmm. if, in case you're new yeah yeah exactly we just <laughs> jump right in <laughs> yeah, should we just jump right in because it's we'd never done it preempt before so excuse us our eagerness but um so yeah this is book versus movie we we read books that have been adapted into movies and then we talk about them we're not experts but um but we have a, we're opinionated i think i could say for both of us mm-hmm. and um so we try to figure out which we like better and we did you know every holiday season we try to do holiday movies and we were kind of done and had to kind of wrap that up and we were going to do the wizard of oz um today but uh but then we i read this on twitter and now we're going to do it's a wonderful life but if you would like to learn more about this podcast or check out some of our other episodes, make sure that you follow us on Facebook. And there's a couple ways you can do that. Right. We have a basic Facebook page. Just type in book versus movie. We post all the episodes there. Like that page. We also have a Facebook group. And you ask to join the group. And then people are super interactive with one another. It's a really nice place to hang out. Especially if you like talking about books and movies. And our fans usually do. So that's a great place to do it. I'd say also you following us on Twitter. At book versus movie. Spell it out. We have an Instagram page now. It's book versus movie. You spell it out. We also have email. You can send us a note comments, suggestions, book versus movie podcast at gmail.com. And I also want to say we also have some stickers. If y'all want some book versus movie stickers, send us an email, let us know, and I'll put it in the mail for you right away. Anything else? Yeah. We should, so. Or what? Go ahead. Let's just say we, um, we are brought to you by Audible. And for you listeners of book versus movie, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. And I just wanted to recommend to you guys, it's the book, we're gonna be, the short story we're talking about today, excuse me, The Greatest Gift. It is available on Audible and it is narrated by none other than Edward Herman. And it's 
really great. He's one of the greatest narrators, RIP. So in order to try this service out for yourself, just go to audibletrial.com forward slash book versus movie. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash book versus movie for your free audiobook. I thought that the story of this story was so fantastic. It's probably, it was written by, let's see, what's his name? Philip Van Doren Stern. Mm -hmm. First of all, his mother's last name was Van Doren. So his, he has his mother's maiden name as his middle name, which I thought was kind of interesting. But anyway, he, um, he always wanted to be a writer and he was kind of like writing his whole life, but not, he wasn't really successful at it. And he, he got this idea for this story, like in a flash and he, he like he could see the entire story from start to finish and he wrote it and he said it wasn't very good and so he kind of put it away for a few years and then he brought it out again later and reworked it a little bit and he was like you know I think this is a pretty good story and he sends it all over the place and he gets no takers and so he but he believes in the story and so what he does is he he um, prints it up himself kind of like we were talking about Charles Dickens recently we were talking about Christmas Carol and how Dickens took on the publishing himself so he 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 publishes basically prints it up himself and he sends it 200 copies as a little pamphlet 21 pages because it's a short story and he sends it as a christmas card to his friends in 1943 and it's 200 copies that go out and people start to hear about this story and it starts to get passed around to people and people make copies of it and eventually it finds a place in Hollywood and it finds a place with Frank Capra who just started Liberty Films and he was looking for a project and Frank Capra by the way is his own backstory I mean talking about like yeah. super interesting people but what happened was he was directing films in the 30s and he was getting very popular and then the war hits and then he made propaganda films for the U.S. government, and Jimmy Stewart and many actors joined the military and served. And then all these men came home, and men and women came home, and they started making movies again, and it's like, well, the business is different, and the world is different, and what are we going to put out there? And Capra struggled, because he hadn't had a movie out, I believe, since Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which was in 1939. So he gets this project, and he buys it, and he brings on Jimmy Stewart. And uh, it's it's incredible. I mean, the very basics. I mean, should we talk about the the short story? It's a short story, guys. I could tell yeah, you, it's a very very short story. Yes, and the and it's good. I think it's very well written. I do too. I I think he you could tell he put a lot of time into it, and it's. George Bailey is in this book, but they kind of begin with him in the short story. All it is is him at the bridge and he's contemplating committing suicide. And then a stranger shows up and says, hey, man, what are you doing? And it's not his name is not Clarence. We don't get the idea as an angel. We don't know what he who or what he is. But they start talking for a few minutes. And then it turns out George, he's married, has kids. He doesn't have a debt. Um, he's more just like I would say clinically depressed. He's a very depressed human yeah. being. You know, he doesn't know where he fits in in the world and he just feels alone and desperate. And so this person gives him the ability to like to be as if he had never existed in the first place. And so George goes by the tree where he crashed the car. The car isn't there because he didn't drive the car. And then oh, and the person gives him a bag of brushes and people used right. to clean their furniture with brushes. To du for dust and stuff like that and says just say this to people you're with the, this brush company and you're just giving out free brushes for the end of the year you're cleaning up your stock you know and so this would give him a, a, a way to talk to people and George kind of goes along with it and he goes home and he sees his mom and dad and dad's alive in the story and they mm -hmm. have a, a, a dog and the dog like doesn't normally the dog loves George to pieces. This do dog wants to rip him to pieces because he's a stranger. And he realizes that there's a portrait in their parents house. And normally it's a picture of him and his brother, Harry. Well, because he wasn't alive, Harry drowned while swimming. And whereas in real life, he would have protected his brother because he doesn't exist. So it's just hair in the wall and that there's a portrait of him. And that the, it was like the last portrait they did of him. And they died like that day or very mm -hmm. soon after. And then he goes to see Mary, his wife. And oh, he goes to, by the way, he first he goes to the, uh, is it, it's the banking office. And yeah. 
and it doesn't exist anymore. And somebody ran off with the money and ripped off the town. And then he goes to see Mary. We all know Mary. Now, Mary is married in this version, mm-hmm. and, but she's married to kind of a bozo, like the, his, her brother-in-law is the one that ripped everybody off. Uh, but uh, right yeah yeah so there there's a guy so it was a guy that had worked in the in the the bank with uh george bailey and yeah so the guy like takes everybody's money and skips town and the guy had a brother who's kind of a sap mm-hmm. and um everybody kind of feels sorry for him and he's the one who married mary and has they have kids together right and and george and she's not She's just she's just not fulfilled. I mean, she's just married, like you said, right. to a sap. And he notes that their kids aren't all that cute or that great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the son has like a, a a toy gun and keeps shooting at him and oh, says, gosh, why aren't yeah. you dead yet? Why aren't you dead yet? So it's kind of like they kind of hit you over the head with it. But he gives a brush to Mary and then he leaves and then he meets with this angel and says, I want to live. I want to I, I don't want that to happen. I want to live again. He says, OK, this is your your chance. So George. George goes back and Mary's happy to see him. They are married now. It's back to the way things are supposed to be. But he notices in the back of her couch is a brush. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of like, ooh, like what's, was it a dream? Was it a not a dream? And, uh, and that's kind of it. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much it. <laughs> you could read it in like 15 minutes, you guys. Seriously. It's really short. It's super short. I mean, Again, he sent it as a Christmas card, so it's, it can only be so long. It's like a pamphlet, basically. But it's very well written. Yeah. And it is, I mean, it's a complete story. And, I mean, it fell into, like you said, it fell into the hands of Frank Capra and, and who spun it into this classic American tale that we all know and love now. And it was a, it was about a couple of years in development. And Capra, what, like I said, he had some, like, Mr. Smith goes to Washington it happened one night, but uh, he's had some successes, but then he's, like I said, he went to make propaganda films. He comes back, he creates this thing called Liberty Pictures, this company, and he went through nine writers to work on this story to make it into what it is now. And it wasn't a great success. Uh, there were, they had big problems with like Clifford Odets was on, was on the staff for a little while. Dorothy Parker was on the script for a while. Apparently he was really tough with writers. He was much more of an actor kind of person, but anyway, so then he created this movie, which now we have, it stars Jimmy Stewart and it comes out in 1946. And should we play the trailer first? Oh yeah. Okay. It's wonderful news, for when all these wonderful people get into the swim, it's a wonderful life. For never before has any film contained such a full measure of the joy of living, the drama of living, and above all, the glorious romance that makes this such a wonderful life. Don't you ever get tired of just reading about things? Yeah. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, I don't want to get married to anybody, you understand? I want to do what I want to do. And, and you... And you, you may have heard the story before, but it's true. It wasn't that big of a hit at the time. Mm-hmm. And it didn't get all great reviews. A lot of people thought it was things like they thought it was sappy. 
and melodramatic and there's people some people didn't like the screenplay they thought the leads were good but you know in what like we said it just was not a big hit and then the year it comes out it was nominated for a bunch of oscars but it was the year that the movie the best years of our lives was up for everything uh, <laughs> which is such a good movie <laughs> never seen it oh what a great oh i love that movie it's, that's my father-in-law's favorite movie of all time is that movie they they play it on um turner classic movies usually on veterans day but it's filled with uh hollywood actors who served in the war and it's all about these mm-hmm. men that come back from the war and then the they're basically de- dealing with their battle stretch their piece their PTSD coming back to the States and everything. And, and it won everything and it should have, it's a, it's a brilliant movie and it, it deserved all the, the accolades, but this is the, you know, what happened is this movie came out just at the same time as that one did. And that was the big hit. This wasn't the big hit. So it, you know, Frank Capra goes on to make other movies. Jimmy Stewart becomes Jimmy Stewart. Uh, Donna Reed becomes Donna Reed. Everybody goes on. And then in the seventies, they, the, trademark passed um fell fell through the cracks so all of a sudden anybody that wanted to play it could just play it and so it was mm-hmm. on every station there was a time you could have it's what it's a wonderful life would be on something you know oh yeah it, you could it would be on three channels at the same time yeah it was when you had eight channels all together. Yeah, you know? <laughs> this is back when you, exactly. And then like cable comes along in the eighties, and maybe you have like thirty or forty channels. But yeah, two mm-hmm. or three of them would be playing this movie, and some of them would just do it over and over and over again on a loop. And it also, and so then what happened was that the, actually the author, his family owned the rights to the original story, and somehow they were able to get back the rights of the movie, and the movie was then bought by NBC. And then every year, NBC would just air it once a year. And now yeah. I think it's on USA Network a little bit more often. And then I was telling you, Margot, there's a free version on Prime, Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. that I watched this afternoon, and it took me about 10 minutes to realize, like, Oh, I'm looking at the colorized version. This is a black and white movie. And then in the 80s, there was this time where they were colorizing movies like crazy. Ugh. Ugh. And it's it. But it but what it did, the strange thing, though, is that it did preserve the films, but it does make them look weird. I mean, this this I like this version much better in black and white than I do in color. Oh, it's way better in black and white. It's it's you can get it for free in black and white, too. But yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's meant it's meant to be. In black and white, and you know, I mean, they the, the the people who were working in black and white, and they had color movies in these days already, but people really learned how to manipulate that form to um, to enhance the meaning of the story. And so, you know, the white snow and the darkness of Potterville and the neon lights and the it, it, it yeah, it just doesn't read as it just is a whole other kind of movie in color, right. So we should talk a little bit about, well, let's go through the cast. So we have Jimmy Stewart as our George yeah. Bailey. Oh, no. And you ta- you look up his story. He was a hero in World War II and immediately went right and was very humble about it, like a lot of them were. So he's about 37 or so when he stars in this. And he plays George from like 20 to like 40. And then we have Donna Reed as as Mary. How gorgeous is Donna Reed? Oh, right? Oh, my God. Wow. Her, her face is like a sunset. It's just so pretty. Oh, she's so pretty. It's ridiculous. Yes. And then we have Lionel Barrymore as Mr. Potter, who's our big meanie. And we have Uncle Billy, uh, who's played by Thomas Mitchell. We have Clarence, who's our angel, played by Henry Travers. And uh, Mrs. Bailey, Beulah Bond- Bondi. She played Jimmy Stewart's mother in like four other movies. <laughs> Like she made a career out of it. Yep. And then we have Burton Ernie, Frank yep. Phelan, Ward Bond. Supposedly that's just a coincidence that because uh, the rumor was that, you know, Burton Ernie on Sesame Street, Jim Henson was a big fan of this movie. So he gave them those names. Turns out that's probably just a coincidence. It wasn't the case. But we also have Gloria Graham as Violet. And Margo, I don't know if you've heard of this movie. It's called Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. And it stars Annette. No. It stars Annette Benning, who you she studied in San Diego acting. That's Margot's base in San Diego. Yeah, Annette Annette Benning. Annette Benning studied. She went to the same junior college and went to the same junior college theater program where I met my husband. 
when we were in college in that program, she was starring, she would, had just made it, I don't even remember if it had come out yet, but she just made The Grifters, mm -hmm. and she came and spoke to our class. Which I'm so jealous, because I just think she's amazing. <laughs> she played, it's a movie, is, once again, it's called Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. Annette Benning plays Gloria Graham in Gloria's later years. Gloria... Oh, wow, she does look like her. Oh, it's 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 really uncanny so Gloria in her 50s gets cancer and she's dating a guy who's much much younger and he's an actor and basically she moves in with his family and they live near Liverpool and oh. that's where she spent her final days so that's Gloria Graham and Gloria Graham by the way also another world-class beauty as Violet Mm -hmm. and Mr. Gower and Sam Wainwright, Harry Bailey. We have all these characters. So the difference is that you get more of the backstory. You really get the story of George his entire life. You meet him as a young boy and see the choices in the, he made and then why he becomes, why he gets to the point where he is and why he feels so alone and desperate. And it's a true three-act wonder that you're getting being a part of. And my question to you is, how many times do you cry when you watch this movie? Oh, my God. Okay. So I just watched it like a minute ago. I just finished watching it right before we, we got on here. Mm -hmm. And um, and my kids and my husband were out. And so they come back and I'm just like, <laughs> and my husband is going like, what are you, what happened? <laughs> I said, oh, I just, I just finished, I just finished watching the movie. And he says, uh, it's a wonderful life. And I said, yeah. And he's like, so why were you crying? And I was, I looked at him like he was insane. He's never seen it. What? He's never, yeah. I, I'm just learning this for the first time. He's never seen It's a Wonderful Life. Well, you got to change that. I know. And so I was like, it's, it, I, and how do you explain this? No. In it, like, you know, two minutes before I have to call Margo. Yeah. I, that's not going to, yeah. <laughs> so George Bailey, he, he's a, a, as a young boy, he rescues his brother, Harry. Harry goes down, uh, uh, he's sledding and Harry, Harry falls through the ice. And yes. so, and it's harrowing. And so George saves him. And then, but George develops a hearing problem in one of his ears. He can't hear out of one of his ears. And then as a young man, he works for Mr. Gower, who's the druggist. And the first time I cry myself silly oh, is, me when, too. is when George, so Mr. Gower gets a telegram saying that his, it's, it's World War I around that time that his son died of the influenza epidemic, that which, which wiped out millions of people. And Mr. Gower gives George this drug to give to, a prescription to give to somebody. And George realizes he's putting poison in the medicine. He doesn't know what to do. So he goes to see his father to, to ask what his father would do. And his father's being berated by Mr. Potter, who wants to take over his family business. So George comes back and Mr. Gower is furious because he heard from this woman that he hasn't, her, her prescription hasn't been delivered. So he starts slapping George around. And poor George is like, I know, Mr. Ke I'm going to cry now. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. He's so, he's so understanding. He's like, I know you're not really mad at me. Yeah. Oh, God. Be over in five minutes. Wait a minute, Blaine. Voice of capsules. I feel... Didn't you hear what I said? Yes, sir. I... What kind of tricks are you playing in away? Well, why don't you ride into the living room right away? Don't you know that boy's very sick? Thank you, Greeny. My store here. You lazy loafer. Mr. Gower, you don't know what you're doing. You put something wrong in those capsules. I know you're really... Me? You got the telegram and you're upset. You put something bad in those capsules. It wasn't your fault, Mr. Gower. Just look and see what you did. Look at the bottle you took the bottle from. It's poison, I tell you. It's poison. I know you feel bad. You <laughs> Oh. Don't do my story again. Oh, no, Don't do no, my no. story again. Oh, George. George. Oh, Mr. Gow, I would never tell anyone. I know you're feeling. I would have felt so close to die, I would. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise I'll never tell anybody. And it's he's, yeah. he's remarkable. I mean, he never does. This kid is really good, by the way. Oh, the, and the the blood coming out of his ear, like they're. Oh like, yeah, it's a real. It's a tough scene to see. And then, so what happens is George just becomes this person that. He gives up, he, his parents can't save up to put him to college, so he has to save up for that. 
And then he has this money saved for, for to go to college. It takes him a long time. And that's the right age. When he's working for his father. And then his brother Harry's then going to go to college after George. Well, the father dies. And so the whole business is going to go under. And the only reason that the, they'll keep it together is if Harry, I mean, I'm sorry, if George agrees to stay behind and run the Bailey business and loan, the Bailey building. And so he gives his brother money to his brother so his brother can go to college instead. And then, and this is when we meet Mary and Jimmy Stewart. Um, he falls in love with Mary. And he, by the way, all George wants to do is travel. That's all mm-hmm. this guy wants to do. He wants to travel. He wants to see things. He's, so, he's super curious and he's constantly, everything's happening to him to keep him here in, in Bedford Falls, which is based in New York in the story. And so he, so he marries, he, his brother goes to college and then the brother comes back and his, they're supposed to switch off. So now George can go off to college and earn an education and stuff. And that's when he finds out his brother met a great girl in college, married her. And by the way, her dad has his own company and he wants to hire Harry. And, and and George, the look on his Jimmy Stewart's face when he realizes like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm still g- yeah yeah, and like, what are you gonna do? His brother fell in love. He married a great girl, and you know it's this great opportunity. And so George, there's a very famous scene where George, Harry gets married, and George leaves the party that they have that night. And his mother goes, "Why don't you go up and look up Mary Hatch? You know, you you know, I think she's home right now. Why don't you go look her up?" And he goes and looks her up, and he's being and I love it because George is very moody. You know, he he has bad moods and is grumpy sometimes Mm -hmm. but there's this whole great scene like they're having this he meets mary mary thinks there's gonna be it's super romantic and then but he's a grumpy grouse and they have an argument and he leaves and then as he comes when he comes back to get his hat he forgot his hat that's when sam sam wainwright calls and he's sort of a love interest for mary and he calls them up to say hey invest in my company you were gonna go places and the, the faces of Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed are like right next to each other talking into a phone. And the passion that they have for each other mm-hmm. couldn't melt butter. It's like they are so hot together in this little black and white scene and this kissing scene. Apparently there was all yeah. these, this dialogue that they had to get rid of because they just started making out and it just worked better that way. <laughs> So they get married, and that keeps him in Bedford Falls for a little while longer. And then, so George never works in plastics. He never goes to New York. He never travels. He and Mary have four kids. It's two boys, two girls. And so George is running this business for a while. And they have, oh, so just before, by the way, when he and Mary are going to get go on their honeymoon, all they want to do is just go on a honeymoon. They save up $2,000, which I don't know how much that is in today's dollars, but they saved, scrimped and saved, and they were going to travel. And then the bank was running, um, was going to run out of money. They're the Bailey business and loan. People were running for the banks, like to take all their money out because they worried they were going to lose all their money. And Mr. Potter saying to people, oh, I'll pay 50 cents on the dollar for whatever you have in Bailey business and loan. And George and Mary, they take their honeymoon money. They're like, nope, we'll give you money to, to last until this whole craziness is over. So they never go on their honeymoon, but they move into this really spooky house and live together and then it's enormous it's enormous and it's like it had, it's very sweet like the the scene it's Bert and Ernie singing outside of the window to them yeah. on their honeymoon you know their honeymoon night and they the, the idea is like they stay there for a few years and then Harry then when the war happens Harry goes off and becomes a war hero Bert goes away like but George has to stay in because of his bad ear but he does what the work he can do at home the war is over Harry's a war hero he's gonna come home and there's money that that needs to be deposited in the bank, and it's just before Christmas. And George is stressed out. They never have enough money. They have four kids. And I don't know about you, but every time Uncle Billy, with that money, goes to the oh, bank, oh. and he takes and he takes the newspaper out of Potter's hands, and gets yep. all like full of like, oh, what are you reading here? Because he's reading about Harry Bailey, and he leaves the goddamn money behind. Oh. Every time this kills me, I have to leave the room or fast forward. Right? <laughs> I know. It's, me too. It drives me crazy. I want to kill Uncle Billy at this point. But this is $8,000 now that's missing. 
And it basically looks like they embezzled it, right? Because he can't account for it. And eight thousand dollars—that's maybe like like fifty k nowadays, maybe even more. But George is freaked out, so he goes home and he doesn't know how to tell Mary what's going on. He's just completely in a panic. There's scenes where he's like hugging his kids and he's crying and yelling at them, and he's just going through everything. And then he takes off, heads to the bar. And he, by the way, he screams at Zuzu's teacher. His, his youngest is Zuzu. Yeah. He, uh, he, when he yells she's at sick. She's sick. And he blames the teacher for sending her around half naked without her coat or something. And that's not the teacher's fault. He's just lashing out. But you're just like, there's certain scenes that are so hard to watch because they're so human. Oh, I know. <laughs> <You> I know. know. <laughs> you know. He's got four kids and they're all the same age. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in that house. I know exactly what they're going through. <laughs> So yeah, he goes to the bar. Oh, I know. And I that scene for me is hard too when he's in the bar and he's just so crying. Oh, I know. I know. He's so desperate. Yeah. He just doesn't know what to do and he just gets he, he drinks too much and Mr. Martini who runs the bar and there's a whole there's a whole thing about immigrants, you know, that the, the immigrant positive kind of movie like yeah. they, they well, cre- Capra. Yes. Capra was an Italian immigrant. Yep. He came to the States yeah. from from Italy in the early part of the century. So 19th century, no, 20th century, excuse me. So Bailey's all, the, the, there's a Bailey business and loan, but they also create homes for people and they make affordable, they basically they're creating affordable housing so that people don't have to go to Potter to rent an apartment. They can actually own a home. And George, you know, they do all these things, but the the homes are worth so much more than they actually sell them for because they like the people and all this stuff. So George is just despondent. He gets, he runs out of the bar. Mr. Martini tries to protect him, but he he won't listen to anybody. Drives his car, crashes it into a tree and just wanders to this bridge and it's snowing and he's freaked out and he's upset. And then the next thing you know, you see a man jump into the water and that's Clarence, our angel, by the way, who's been watching George's life. And we've met George through Clarence. And so George jumps in to save him. And then this is what, so what happens is that Clarence explains, I'm angel second class. I don't have my wings yet. I have to earn them. Underwear. Wife gave me this on my last birthday. <laughs> I passed away in it. Oh, Tom Sawyer's drying out too. You should read the new book Mark Twain's writing now. How did you happen to fall in? I didn't fall in. I jumped in to save George. You what? To save me? Well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? Go through with what? Suicide. Oh, it's against the law to commit suicide around here. Yeah, it's against the law where I come from, too. Where do you come from? Heaven. I had to act quickly. That's why I jumped in. I knew if I were drowning, you tried to save me. You see, you did. And that's how I saved you. Uh, uh, very funny. Your lip's bleeding, George. Yeah. I got a bust in the jaw in answer to a prayer a little bit ago. Oh, no, 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 George. I'm the answer to your prayer. That's why I was sent down here. How'd you know my name? Oh, I know all about you. I've watched you grow up from a little boy. What are you, a mind reader or something? <laughs> well, who are you, then? Clarence Oddbody, AS2. Oddbody. AS2, what, what, what's that, AS2? Angel, second class. And so, and every time you hear a bell rings, that means that it... Uh, Angel is getting its wings. And so George basically, and well, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, you're the kind of angel I probably would get, huh? And he's, he's skeptical. And then that's when Clarence gets the idea of like, well, it would be better if he, George says, it would be better if I weren't born at all. Uh-huh. And so Clarence is like, all right, that's what Easy. you want. Yeah. <laughs> and so George goes around. He goes back. First he goes to, he sees the tree. There's nothing wrong with the tree because he didn't drive the car into the tree. There's no car there. Then he goes to Martini's and then you go to Martini's and it's like a gin joint out of the thirties. You know, there's Mm -hmm. jazz music. It's very loud. And the bartender, Nick, 
yell, you know, is surly. And normally Nick's his pal, but you know, Nick, Nick is hostile and, and uh, he, he throws them out. You know, he and Clarence out. No, oh, I'm giving wings. Look at this. And then George sees his mother and his mother's just running some kind of a flop house kind of situation. Doesn't recognize yeah. him. And then he finds out, he looks for his brother. He can't find, he finds his brother's grave. His brother, Harry, died because George wasn't there to save Harry. And Harry also saved all these men on a ship in World War II. All the men on the ship died because Harry wasn't there because George wasn't there. And then the big one that we're supposed to be totally shocked by, well, also it's Pottersville. So it's not. Oh yeah, it's Pottersville. It's Pottersville. Potter runs everything. And they're all bars. Yeah, it's just all bars. It's nothing but bars. <laughs> it's just bars, bars and bars. Bars and one boarding house run by George's mom. Yeah, and neon, and neon lights, and it's very loud, and there's a lot of cops, you know, sounds and things like that. And then on the, then he says, "Where's Mary? I got to see Mary." And Clarence is like, "Oh boy, you don't want to see this one." And Donna Reed comes down the street, and she's basically in kind of a dowdy coat and glasses, and she's leaving the library. And yeah. we're told, but she's an old maid. <laughs> she's an old maid. She never married anyone. We're all supposed to think like that's the big tragedy. <laughs> Which, no, it's it's a weak one. That they they they, sh- they could have thought that one out a little bit more. But she, George realizes. So he goes. He, tw- he goes to the house that he and Mary raising the kids. The house is abandoned. He go. He's. Uh, at one point, G- George is like realizes like, oh shit, this really happened. Like I really willed this f- to happen, and he's trying to grab at Mary, like to hug her and to convince her what's going on. And Mary screams and she runs into this bar, and then George runs out of the bar. And Bert, uh, the cop, or Ernie is the cop. Bert's the cop. Bert shoots at him, like in the middle of the street. Yeah. By the way, crowded street, just starts shooting at him. A man That's running away. It's Pottersville. It's lawless. <laughs> in the in the Twitter the Twitter conversation that I was reading where I found out that this was a short story, they were like, she, you know, everybody's going on and on about, oh, it's the worst thing. She's a librarian. And somebody said, oh, yeah, but she's a librarian in, in Pottersville, which means it's just a library of, of like, racist books and porn. It's all, yeah. that's all it is. <laughs> it, actually, you're right. It would be terrible. It, I'm sure they have no budget. I don't, I'm sure they don't get the good books. So George goes back to the bridge. And where it all this started, and then he says, he prays to God, please let me live again. I want to live again. Clarence! Clarence! Help me, Clarence! Get me back! Get me back! I don't care what happens to me! Get me back to my wife and kids! Help me, Clarence, please! Please! I want to live again! I want to live again! I want to live again. Please, God, let me live again. (laughs) Hey, George! George! You all right? Hey, what's the matter? Now, get out of here, Bert, or I'll hit you again. Get out of here. What the Sam Hill are you yelling for, George? You... George. Bert, do you know me? Know you? Huh, you kidding? I've been looking all over town trying to find you. I saw your car piled into that tree down there, and I thought maybe you... Hey, your mouth's bleeding. Are you sure you're all right? What you... <laughs> My mouth's bleeding, Bert! My mouth's bleeding! Zuzu pedals. Zuzu... There they are! Bert! What do you know about that? Merry Christmas! And all of a sudden, and then I get, and I'm crying my eyes, and out. I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm just I can't yeah. even because it's Jimmy Stewart. I mean, my God, George. Uh, that Bert sees him on the bridge and's like, "Hey, man, we've been looking for you." And he, "Oh, you recognize me? Recognize me?" And George starts running through the streets. And it's a pretty famous scene. Jimmy Stewart kind of waving at the buildings and stuff like that, and yelling and screaming and just with joy, with absolute joy. And he goes home, and he goes home, and he and the bank examiner's there. And uh, all these people are there, and then he, he, all he cares about is seeing his family. And so he sees the kids, and he hugs them, and then Mary comes in. And then we find out that Mary went out around town and found out what was going on and told everybody, George needs money, or he's going to wind up in jail. Like, we need your help. And so 
all of a sudden everybody in town just starts coming through and giving George money and they put it in the baskets and the Mr. Martini busted the juta box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that always makes me laugh. And um, Sam Wainwright said he's, his office is, is authorized to send up to $25,000, which is a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. And then the bank examiners are kind of like, all right, yeah, he's 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 okay. We're they're, they're not going to process. They're going to serve him papers, and then the uh, old Janie, the older daughter, starts playing "Hark the Herald Angels Sing," and then yep. everybody starts singing along. And then Harry comes in, and the fool flew in a blizzard to get there in time, as he tells everyone. And he mm-hmm. and George reunite, and I get all weepy again. And then, oh, me too. <laughs> I can't, can't with those two. And then. Uh, well, we forgot to mention that uh, Clarence is carrying around a copy of Tom Sawyer uh, by Mark Twain, and he leaves a copy of it on the on the table that George can see, and it says, "No man is a failure who has friends." And that's when I start really sobbing. Yep. <laughs> and then you hear bells ringing, and little Zuzu says, "Look, teacher Look, says <laughs> every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings." He's like, "Yeah, that's right." And I a soppy mess, and yep. then they sing "Old Lang Syne," and I'm just I'm 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 done, and I have to lie down. <laughs> yep, and that's the movie. <laughs> and that's the movie. <laughs> we we spoil, by the way. We tell you everything. Ay yeah yeah. It's I mean, come on, yeah, come on. <laughs> it's amazing. It's it's completely amazing. I freaking love this movie. Yeah. It works on multiple viewings, too. You notice yes! new things about it. And there's new right? characters you really care about. Yeah. Like, I love Violet, Gloria Graham. I like her character. I love her. And 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 then this time, this is the first time I've ever, I was ever like, who are these bank examiners that are working on Christmas Eve? <laughs> They're there till late. Like, <laughs> like, literally, as we're recording this, Congress was face is shutting they're they're about to sh- is like they're gonna shut down the government like all these people's jobs hang in the balance and congress is like well let's go home yeah <laughs> but the bank examiners <laughs> well, they're on the job well it's they're not grand. gonna sleep <laughs> yep so it's yeah so that's it's like we said it wasn't a big hit at the time it got nominated for a lot of awards but it, it wasn't until around the 70s they started playing it all the time and then the 80s and 70s and 80s it was playing all the time and then NBC bought the rights to it and now it's much more of a special deal but you can you can rent this movie very easily it's on it's available on streaming you can find it anywhere but it's a classic for a reason and it still makes me cry I'm surprised I haven't broken down yet. I think I'm going to be okay, but I have like 10 minutes left for, uh, for the movie in I'm my sure, other room. Yeah. yeah. So I, I will cried be. cried and cried and cried. The, I cried the entire time. You, I did not. I, I really, the, the second, like when he saves his brother and the ice and yeah. the, oh, and I love the opening of the movie where it's the stars talking to each yes. other. That's so clever. Yeah. Yeah. It's super, super clever. Do you remember the first time you saw this movie? No, I've seen it so many times. I can't think of the first time I saw it. I had to be really small. I think I I was I was like twelve or thirteen, and I I remember I ran to my parents' room and I bawled my eyes out. <laughs> yeah, I used to I used to close. I remember I remember being really little and watching it, you know, and with my family at Christmas time. And I remember like having to look away and close my eyes when when Mr. Gower is beating him up. Oh. Yeah, the kids. I think those kids are so good. The little girl that plays Violet mm-hmm. and the little girl that plays Mary and the the boy that plays George is so good. Yeah. Yeah. All of the acting is incredible here. It's really good. Yeah. Yep. We love it. We love it. And it's a great story. It's a, I thought it was so good. Super short. Yeah. But very good. Yeah. And well written. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad we read it. I mean, it was, it was good. And I, and I always love seeing this movie. So I, I was really psyched when you made the suggestion. So we are going to do the wizard of Oz. <laughs> yes. That's coming up. Oh, yes. Coming up. <laughs> so just you know, cool your jets, everybody. Oh, so book versus movie, which do you prefer? Oh, movie. Yeah, of course. Right. Of course. You know, the book, the book is a fully, it's g- super good. And yeah. it's a fully realized story. But all of the t- extra touches that ended up in the Capra version are so great. Mm-hmm. They add so much. It's such a beautiful story. I agree. I totally agree. 
So normally we say, what are we doing next? The next thing we're going to be doing is The Wizard of Oz. So you guys prepare for that. And Margo, where can they find you? Well, you can find, well, I'm not doing a lot of social media right now because, you know, it's the holidays. Right. But, <laughs> but um, normally you can find me on all the social media platforms. All of my handles everywhere are at She's Not Your Mama. My other podcast, which I'll get back to as soon as I finish this freaking book, is the Chingona Homesteader podcast. And where can they find you? All of my social media is at Brooklyn Fit Chick, and I'm mostly active on Twitter and Instagram. And my blog is called BrooklynFitChick.com. And the other shows I work on are the Not Fade Away podcast, the Fit Bottom Girls podcast, the Dorking Out show, and the Best Neighbors podcast. And guys, thanks so much for coming. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with The Wizard of Oz. Woohoo! Woo! Thank you so much for listening to the Book vs. Movie Podcast. We are a part of the Frolic Podcast Network. You can find more podcasts you will love at frolic.media forward slash podcasts. We follow the hashtags Lady Pod Squad and Potter and Family. If you want to support the show, you can go to our Patreon page, go to P-A-T-R-E-O-N and look for Book vs. Movie Podcast. We have a basic Facebook page, but we also have a private Facebook group. Go to Facebook and type in Book VS Movie Podcast Group if you want to join that. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Book vs. Movie. Spell all those words out. If you'd like to send us an email, it's Book vs. Movie Podcast. Spell that all out at gmail.com. You can follow Margot D at Brooklyn Fit Chick on social media and Margot P at She's Nacho Mama. Thanks so much again for checking out our show, and we'll be back soon with a new episode.